Okay, gang, after this video, after we discuss the Vidig reaction, you definitely owe yourselves a little pat on the back because we are finally done with carbonyls. Okay, so there's some weird terminology that goes along with this reaction, some things that are going to be definitely, definitely new. So I'm going to give you an example, then I, I want to kind of backtrack, kind of show you where some of that stuff came from, and then do a, a problem or two, and then there's definitely some on the worksheet alongside this video, so then you'll pl have plenty of practice with the Wittig reaction. Okay, so let me just throw on an example of a reaction up here. I'll show you like the two-step mechanism. It's not really a mechanism. And then I'll kind of show you how we can go about this reaction methodically. Okay. So don't be thrown off by any of this stuff. Okay, so if you can see up in the, uh, no, ignore this for a second, if you can see up in this box, for a Wittig product to be formed, you need a carbonyl, check, something called a yilid, again, another useless fancy vocabulary word to flash in your arsenal of words, and if you have a carbonyl and a yilid, you'll form what's called a Wittig product. Okay, so clearly we definitely have a carbonyl right here. I'm going to kind of dot this carbonyl carbon, give him a thick dot. And then we have something called a yilid over here. And here's what a yilid is. A yilid is whenever you have a negative charge and a positive charge next door to each other. That's it, okay? So here's kind of how this mechanism proceeds. And electronically, this should make sense. Let me use different, a different color. Okay, so, right, we have a negative carbanion right here. Oh, and a quick side note. This is kind of okay as it is, right? Because we have these charges next door to each other. That's a little bit of a stabilizing effect. That's why this yield will form in the first place. Okay, however, right, we have this negative charge on this carbanion. No surprise, he's going to be attracted to and will attack our partially positive carbonyl carbon, going along with that whole trend that we've seen this unit, right? At the same time, right, we need to bounce some electrons in the carbonyl between the carbon and the oxygen. Well, this partially negative oxygen is going to be kind of drawn to that partially positive phosphorus. So he's going to take one of the bonds from the double bond and he's going to bond to that phosphorus over there. So if we're going to take a, a side kind of like down below mechanistic route up to the product over here, here's kind of like the result of that electron flow. I'm going to go ahead and throw an asterisk on this carbon and you'll see why. So I like to draw this piece first, right? I like to keep him kind of stationary. So there are my four carbons. Here's my dot carbon. No longer do we have a double bond anymore, but a single bond to oxygen, right? And now we have to play the game of who's attached to who. This oxygen is attached to this phosphorus, and this phosphorus has, I'm going to do, he has three phenyl groups. That's what that pH means. He has three phenyl groups attached to him. So I'm just going to put pH in parentheses with a little three sub subscript right there. This phosphorus is attached to the asterisk carbon, right? So if I draw a line down, that is my asterisk carbon. And the asterisk carbon is also bonded to the dot carbon, right? Awesome. And off the asterisk carbon, I have one, two carbons. So I'll just fill those in. Okay? So you always form this kind of square intermediate in your video reactions, right? And really, there's only one more step of arrows we have to show. So here's kind of what happens. You don't need to know the reason why, but phosphorus and oxygen, they bond very well together. So what's going to happen is one of these bonds is going to break, and you're going to see a double bond form between phosphorus and oxygen. At the same time, this bond between this, uh, this stock carbon and this oxygen, that is also going to break. And the way it's going to break is it's going to form a double bond between the dot carbon and the asterisk carbon. And if we're going to try, try kind of draw our arrow going up like this, draw your product exactly the way you draw it here. Do you see that the double bond we're going to form right here? Do you see how that's going to be a cis double bond? So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. I'm going to try and draw it exactly the same. One, two, three. That's my asterisk carbon. There's my dot carbon. And then off the dot carbon, one, two, three. 
One, two, three. Okay. And if you want to be completely thorough, we have this as well. Triphenylphosphine. But ignore him. Okay. So you see that in doing the Wittig reaction, in the transition state, because of the way this square forms, when you form a double bond, it is always, 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 always going to be a cis double bond in a Wittig reaction. That's indicative of a Wittig product. So as long as you can form this square and you can kind of draw your, your kind of arrows going up that way to having phosphorus and oxygen leave and forming your double bond, that's really all there is to a Wittig reaction. Okay, what I want to do is I want to erase this. I want to sh so, so there's really two types of Wittig reactions. There's the one where they show you, all right, here's your carbonyl, here's your, uh, your yellid, form your Wittig product, okay? They're not that hard. I have a few of them on the worksheet. We can do another one in this video. But I want to show you there's also a different type of problem where they give you the Wittig product and they kind of need you to do some work on the reactant end and I just want to show you one, how to form a yield and then how to do one of those problems. So give me a sec, I'll erase this, and we'll get back at it. Okay, so before we actually do that problem, I want to show you guys how to actually make a yield. And the best part is, you know how to do every one of these steps, but we'll just actually do it together. Okay, so the first thing you need to realize is when you look at a yield, right, if I'm going to kind of draw an imaginary line like that, Right? The phosphorus isn't part of the carbon chain, so this is a 1, 2, 3 carbon yield. So that means we must have started out with a propane, right? So that's, that's kind of like our first step. Find out how many carbons you must have started with, right? Now, here's what we have to do. We are going to tack on a good leaving group, right? We're going to need to free do some free radical halogenation, and in this circumstance, we need it the way this... PPH3 attaches is through SN2, so we need a good leaving group, which means the good leaving group must have been on, from, on this carbon. So we're not going to brominate, right, because bromination would end up here. We need to chlorinate. Okay, awesome. There's our good leaving group. Now, what we need to do is we need to perform SN2, and we need to actually stick on our PPH3, our triphenyl phosphorus. All right, so PPH3. He is a good nucleophile. He's going to swing in, attack backside, and chlorine will leave. And what that does is by donating that electron pair, phosphorus gets his positive charge, right? Because he kind of gave a lone pair away and got, a, and now he's a part of a bond, so he loses one of his electrons in his formal charge calculation. Okay. Now here's the best part. There's really only one step between here and here. Now remember how I said the negative charge and the positive charge in a yield are kind of stabilizing because they're next door to each other. Well, if you just throw in any base, could be LDA, could be uh, uh, T-butoxide, all you need is some base to pick off this proton, and that will gladly be that will gladly leave and dump his electrons onto this carbon because of that electronic stabilization over there. There's so really steps to make a yield. You have to add a leaving group in the position it needs to go, whether that be primary, secondary, wherever. We're going to do that through free radical halogenation. Then you throw in some PPH3, do some SN2. That adds your positive phosphorus to the mix. Then throw in a strong base. Deprotonate that carbon next to your phosphorus, and then you have your yield. Okay, let me erase this. We'll do a problem together, and I think we'll call this video a wrap. Okay, gang. So here's that second type of a yield or a Wittig reaction problem I was telling you about. Instead of giving us the yield and the carbonyl, and then having us predict the product, now we're, they're going to the, whoever they are, right? The organic gods. They're going to give us some Wittig product, and then they're going to give us some precursor, right? Leaving it pretty ambiguous to us, and then we have some uh, steps over the arrow that we need to fill in as far as reagent goes. Okay, so here's how I usually approach these. Go directly to the Wittig product and draw a squiggly line through your double bond, right? This is what separates the carbonyl from the yield, okay? And now you kind of have some latitude, some privilege to pick. Okay, 
which piece do I want to be the yelid or which piece do I want to be the carbonyl or vice versa? To be completely honest, I kind of, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to make this big cyclohexyl part right up to this carbon right here. So I'm going to dot this carbon. He is going to be the carbonyl. And I'm going to make this two part piece here where I'm going to asterisk this carbon. That will be the yield, okay? So here's kind of why I chose that. Because we start out with this two carbon piece here, one, two, I want to show you guys how to make the yield, and then all you have to do is add the carbonyl at the end. All right, so here's how this is going to go. So you can see, let's, let's draw the yield we must generate, right? So since it's two carbons, right? There's the two carbon aspect of the yield. One more bond, that is to the PPH3. Phosphorus is positive. And that means that next door to that positive phosphorus, there must have been a sneaky little negative charge, right? So this is kind of the thing we need to generate. Then we need, here, then what? Let's actually draw a carbonyl, right? So it's just the ring. And then off the ring, we have this one carbon right there. And he's the one that's part of a double bond. He was the one who got attacked by the yield. That's where the carbonyl is. So we have this little sideways aldehyde type thing going on. All right, so he's going to be the last thing we throw in, right? He's going to be our last uh, aspect over the arrow, our reagent that we're going to throw in. So let's make the, the reagents, uh, let's list the reagents necessary to produce our yield. So remember, the first thing we need to do is if we're starting from here, we need to add a good leaving group, right? And in this case, it's going to, we, we can use bromine or chlorine, right? Because it doesn't really matter. Just for fun, let's use bromine, because why not? So our first step will be Br2 heat or light and heat, right? Br2, Hv, and delta. Okay. So remember, the next step after adding your halogen, your good leaving group, is throwing in your, your PPH3 to do SN2. And remember, that gives you the positive phosphorus on your uh, carbon chain, your precursor to your yield. So then all you have to do then is add PPH3. Three. Okay, and remember, now that we have that positive phosphorus, the way to get that carbon next door to a carbanion is all you have to do is add some good base, whether it be T-butoxide or LDA. I like using LDA because it's easier to write, just laziness. Okay, so now we've these three steps gives us our yield. And now the best part is just write number four, draw your carbonyl, and you're in business. That's, that's how you do this type of problem. So remember, in your, well the first thing is if you ever want to identify a Vitic product at all, just make sure you see a, if you see that cis double bond, could have, it probably was from a Vitic reaction. If you are given the task to kind of generate your yield and then attack a carbonyl, just split the double bond, see what you're given, if it's easier to make your yield, go ahead and do that. And then you can just throw in your carbonyl at the end. Remember, if you're given the two precursors, if you're given your yield and your carbonyl, remember, draw the arrows from the negative carbon, the carbanion, to the carbonyl carbon and have them attached there. Then have your oxygen attached to the phosphorus. Form your square intermediate and then make sure phosphorus leaves the bond with carbon or phosphorus leaves the bond with oxygen and then you form this cis double bond. That is the Wittig reaction. There is two problems on the worksheet at, uh, that goes along with the Wittig reaction. I know you guys got this. Thanks for hanging tough and sticking with me. Carbonyls is officially over. In the next kind of series of videos, we're gonna be kind of working with carbonyls still, but we're gonna be using a couple new functional groups. One you use at the end of OCHEM 1 called the enol, and a new one, kind of the enols analog in a basic environment called an enolate. So, see you guys later.